What's up Cinephiles? So Trans Awareness Week just passed and I might be a little late to the party but I figured it's still worth sharing to review this movie which is now streaming on the recently launched Cinema 76 at Home website. The movie is called Lingua Franca, directed, written, and starred by Isabel Sandoval. This movie gained critical acclaim on a couple of film festivals abroad. That's why I'm really excited to see this. And now here in the Philippines, we can watch it for 250 pesos. And I believe there are other films too that you can watch for free on the Cinema 76 at Home. For international, I think it's streaming on Netflix. Now, before I begin my review, why don't you guys do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to us for weekly reviews of movies, TV shows, and video games. Help us reach that 1,000 subscriber mark. Now onto the review, Lingua Franca is the story of an undocumented Filipina trans woman Olivia, played by the director Sandoval herself. Olivia here resides in Brooklyn. She works as a caregiver and she will do whatever it takes to get that U.S. citizenship, even if it means arranging a fake marriage in pursuit of that green card. Lingua Franca is a nice addition to the immigrant stories that I've seen this year. I've seen this Australian series called Stateless where it focuses on the lives of the immigrants being held inside this compound. Then this horror movie which happens to be my favorite so far this year his house which focuses on the trauma all the anxiety and the fears of living in this new house and in this new town also based on the point of view of the immigrants and lingua franca here has a really well fleshed environment a carefully crafted story so that's why uh, right from the beginning i can say that this strength of this movie lies in its sensibility and its empathy you can feel olivia's anxiety her vulnerability all the apprehensions that she gets because this story is set in a Trump administration where Trump has been really vocal about her anti-immigrant policies so that in itself creates a backdrop where there are a lot of ICE raids and to have a story that's set on a time of escalating arrest and deportation really adds to the tension of the movie. There is a sigh of relief however while watching this movie because US is now living in a post-Trump era so I know a lot of people are thankful for that. But yes apart from being an immigrant story this also deals on the community of the transsexuals so that in itself being it more specific makes a tale that's more gripping because it's a side of a society that's not really shown much that really needs to shed a light on. So there's a journalistic value added into it. It does not only work as a political piece, but also a mood piece in a time where being part of a nation or being accepted from a society requires to be bargained or negotiated. It's truly heartbreaking. I don't know any personal details on the life of Isabel Sandoval, but the way this story is constructed, I won't be surprised if this works as somehow of a semi-autobiography. The story is very heartfelt and she's clearly writing from a place that she understands. She also excels behind and in front of the camera. Her acting is really in tune to the understated story telling that the film is going for. At times though, she can come across as a bit aloof that the emotions struggle to come across through the screen but for the most part, it really works. And it's a rare fit actually to be good both behind and in front of the camera. So that I have to really commend especially that she's the one who wrote this story. The cinematography here is gorgeously framed, helped by Isaac Banks. I love that we get a lot of static shots, the director letting its character breathe and exist for an interrupted moment of time. There are a couple of shots Olivia standing in the crowd which really speaks to her courage to brave this world alone. To be in a foreign country embracing her independence, her newfound gender, it really feels empowering. All while trying to survive in some sort of this Russian Jewish neighborhood where it's very conservative and it's very masculine. There's tension and atmospheric grit but at the same time there's an elegance, there's a dream state quality into it. As for the understated storytelling, I love that it's sensual, it's intimate, and sometimes when it comes to these understated movies, it can come off as pretentious but no it comes off as intelligent there's restraint there's compassion in crafting these characters there's a lot of pauses and silences that suggest that there's more to this story than what the screenplay actually suggests sometimes though to a fault because watching this movie you can feel the tension really bubbling on the surface and as a viewer i wanted it to spill out to feel more of the conflict because just when it reaches its most compelling point sometimes it 
kind of runs out of steam for me. And again, it all traces back to the choice to tell this story in an understated manner. It's very grounded to reality. It's very meditative. But at times though, I wish that the movie is able to draw more intense emotions for me from a narrative aspect, like give me more sense of urgency because doing whatever it takes to get that citizenship is in itself is already a compelling and it will take you to a lot of directions. And I felt like I was wanting that from the movie. Anyway, another character that we get a way over here is Alex, played by Eamon Farren. He's actually the grandson of the elderly that Olivia is trying to take care of. Now, the movie doesn't really spill much of his backstory. I think he's an ex-con. I don't exactly remember. But the way that he is settling for this slaughterhouse job tells me that maybe he's bottling something up and that he's this sort of a enigmatic and mysterious figure and I get that we are getting his POV because he's one of the persons here that Olivia will rely for emotional support and if you've seen the trailer you know there's going to be some romantic sparks between them and there comes the sensual and intimate moments that the film delivers with some mixed languages that I'm really drawn to and I felt like it was beautiful and sexy and also it feels empowering to see a transgender woman embracing her sexuality. I thought at first that the focus of this movie will be some sort of a culture clash, love story against all odds type of thing but you know the movie actually tones down. It doesn't really go on a soap opera route. We mostly get the POV of Alex here as a way of using a different lens to understand who Olivia is or who Olivia was. While that in itself is nice, I feel like that the more interesting character is Olivia. I felt like her character should have remained more center stage throughout the movie. And also Alex does some contradictory actions here towards the end and the responses that we get from Olivia can be a bit confusing, thereby of skating the entire relationship that they had. We talk about that ending without spoiling anything. It ends on an ambiguous note and I personally have mixed feelings about it because I felt like I needed a more detailed confrontation to get more enlightenment on the actions that these characters took at the end of this movie and not just feeling like I was left hanging emotionally because the movie introduces Olivia as a pragmatic character and in the end there's gonna be a clash between practicality and independence. I felt like the movie favored on the route of independence but I'm still a bit confused on the thought process of these characters. That leaving the main conflict unresolved occasionally feels like a cop-out or maybe that's just how it works in world cinema in seeing these slice-of-life movies not really gaining that resolution. Personally, I'm not yet used into that type of storytelling but on an emotional level I was just wanting for more because the narrative has the tendency to look undercooked. But overall, the movie is relatable and timely. We don't really get much of these immigrant stories and I felt like these are one of the more pressing issues that the world needs to address. I can't say if it's emotionally moving enough for me. Maybe there are just some parts that I can't relate but it's such a beautiful study of empathy. Isabel Sandoval here should be really proud of her work especially this is a milestone for the trans visibility in the film festivals. A part of me wishes that this film took a documentary approach because I think that I will get more enlightenment but you know uh, this is actually a competent work enough for me. When it comes to living up to its title, lingua franca actually means a rich language. It's a common language used by two people who don't share the native language. So in here we have Olivia who is a Filipina. Her native language is Cebuana and we have here Alex who speaks Russian. Together their common language or their lingua franca is English. And as a metaphor, this movie has its shared sense of humanity that it transpires regardless of race, sexual identity, gender, or whatever kind of background and the common art form here or the common language here is cinema. So that's what I like to think of it and that's the beauty of it. I think this movie is very thoughtful, it's very understated, it doesn't really feel preachy. I'm going to give this movie a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And that's it for my review of Lingua Franca, written, directed, and starred by Isabel Sandoval. Let me know if you've seen this movie. Hit your thoughts in the comment sections down below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please give us a like and subscribe to us for weekly content. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, see you on the next one.